So, Matthew 18, starting in verse 15, it says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Verily I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So what we're going to talk about tonight is the proper methods, the proper, um, the proper offenses of what is churchable. Okay? What can someone do that they could be churched for? And then how do we go about that? Do we just, one person slamming down, here's the judgment, no, no uh, kind of explanation or anything? Or, or is there a process? I'm give you a hint, there's a process. We just read it. So, let's start in verse 15. First, we have a talk, okay? And this, honestly, is the hardest step. Honestly, if somebody offends you, it is one of the hardest things to just go to that person and say, hey, look, you offended me. We need to hash this out. Why? Because, you know, when things are normal, when things are moving, there's a lot of things that you're like, you know what? That bothers me, but I'm not going to let it bother me. Let's just go forward. Where, you know, not trying to rock the boat, per se. Yeah. Right? But there are definitely things, if they bother you, if you're going to think about it, if you're going to go and, and keep on hashing this out in your mind, it needs to be addressed person to person. This is the hardest thing to do. Verse 15, it says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. The responsibility here is on the person that is offended. Okay? It's not on if somebody hurts you, they need to come and apologize to me. It is if somebody hurts you, you need to go and talk to them and settle it with them. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Hey, there's an opportunity for reconciliation here between me and you. Doesn't have to get any bigger than that. We can talk and it can be over, right? Verse 16, but if he will not hear thee, then take with thee two, one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. So the second thing we need to do here is once you talk with someone who has offended you, then you need to establish the matter. Now, this is not a one-sided establishment, right? Say, Brother Fannin eats my bowl of chicken noodle soup that my wife made, right? And I get pretty upset. And I come and I talk to him, and he tells me, hey, look, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was your chicken noodle soup. And I'm like, well, you need to replace that. And he, you know, I can't do that right now. I don't have any money on me. There's no other food in the church right now. You know what? I, I can't do that right now. And I'm like, that's it. Brother Jake, Brother Dale, come here. We need to talk about this. Right? We're going to establish that... The pastor just stole my food. I'm so hungry. You know what they should do? Is they shouldn't sit there and go, okay, we've established this. Brother Fannin, you have offended Douglas. You need to make this right. No, they should go, Doug, look. This isn't a big deal, okay? You probably don't fast very often anyway, so go ahead and take tonight. Yes. And just cool down, pray about it, right? You're already fasting, might as well pray, okay? The establishing the fault is not one-sided, okay? This could go either way. It's, if I was offended and my two or three witnesses or my one, one or two others establish that I'm at fault, 
That's what this point, that's what this second step is for. This second step is not for nail in the coffin, I told two or three others, I told it to Facebook, so you're the offender, right? No, it's to get things out in the open in a somewhat private manner, which Facebook is not private, okay? If you want to group text two or three other guys, okay, or a conference call, I've done a conference call before, that works, okay? And we worked it out. That's, a, that's better than bringing it before the world and everyone else's churches. And, it, you know, you're not even bringing it to your own church in step two. You're bringing it before two or three other people, one or two other people, and they get to establish what happened. Not you. Okay? First Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians five, I believe. Maybe I'm maybe I'm mixing up Second Corinthians, um, but it says the least in the church are the ones who should judge the matter, right? Um, we're not getting the deacons, the deacon board, to come in and judge this this little matter. We're literally just, hey, brother number one, brother number two, that that happened to be here. Let's let's work this out, okay? It doesn't have to be the higher ups that that take care of this. Let's move on to step. Three. <clears throat> Step three. And if he shall neglect to hear them, so this is actually still step two, where the witnesses establish something, right? And there's a still a time where there's restoration that could happen at step two. Okay? Now step three. But if he neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. Step three is going from semi-private, just a few individuals, to the entire church once it has been established, okay? But if he neglect to hear the church, so there was still a time for reconciliation, even at step three. Step three, the church is coming and saying, hey, look, we heard what's going on. This has been established. This is what the punishment should be. Either party one or party two is guilty. And this is what needs to happen. If it's not taken care of at that point, we see at the end of the verse that there's a punishment. Let him be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Okay, that's how that is established. That is how that is dealt out, how correct churching happens. One, it's private. Two, you just got one or two more people to establish the matter to figure out whether he's guilty or you're guilty. And then three is last chance for whoever the offending party is, whoever the guilty party is, let's get this right. And if it can't be right, you go outside the church. Okay? So that's the process. Now, what is churchable? So what is churchable? Let's go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Now, this isn't an entire list. There are a few other things in here, but this is a really good basic list. Like I said, Brother Fannin ate, ate my soup, my chicken noodle soup. It's not something that he's going to get thrown out of the church for, right? That wouldn't be something I would get thrown out of the church for, right? This is just, <laughs> there's, there's some very serious things that get you thrown out of church. Okay, so 1 Corinthians 5, verse 11. But now I've written unto you not to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator. If you're sleeping around, you're going to get judged for that. Right? You're going to get talked to privately about that. That is going to be established between two or three witnesses. And if you don't get it right, it's going to be brought before the church. Last chance, don't have company with them. <clears throat> or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer. Now, I pulled up this definition of railer because that gets thrown around a lot. Okay? And <clears throat> what we're talking about with a railer is not just a simple, you know, hey, look, I don't think us doing this is edifying. We've had, we've had conversations before, and Brother Dale just 
piped up and said, hey guys, I don't think we should be talking about this. Is, how profitable is all this? And all of us kind of had to go, okay, you know, yeah, you're right. What, what can we use this conversation for to make ourselves better? Nothing. We're just making fun of people. We're just picking on people. We're just rehashing old stuff that can't be changed. Okay. You know what? Brother Dale wasn't railing on anybody. Brother Dale was telling us what it is and look, let's get over it. Thank you. It helps. It helps to have someone just point out error, right? Someone who's pointing out error or trying to examine a situation is not a railer. <clears throat> a railer is someone who is with hateful language casting out accusations and has no reason for it but to cause damage. Okay? <clears throat> Next one. Or a drunkard. Okay, you know, if there's a drunkard in here, yeah, kick him out. <laughs> We're going to establish it. We're going to fix it, right? We're going to make sure all that's good. A drunkard or an extortioner. Hey, if we knew that somebody was in here, or if we suspected that somebody was in here stealing money from people in here, we would absolutely, absolutely investigate that. Guess what? There's three, at least three individuals in this church who are on the bank account here. All of them can log into their phone, look at the transactions, see where money went, see what money came in, see who transferred stuff, right? It's not a secret, right? If, if I started seeing things and I'm like, Brother Dale, you took out like $400 out of our Vistar account. What was that for? That's not me railing on him. That's me with a legitimate concern coming to him privately and going, hey, look, I need to see what you spent that money on. Right? And if Brother Dale didn't have anything to hide, he would say, oh, Brother Fannin asked me to order Bibles and to do this and to do that, and here it is. No problem. Right? We, we get into this this almost this mindset where, hey, look, the U.S. Constitution says, uh, my Fourth Amendment right, you can't look at anything that I have because it's private. Church funds are not private. No. Church funds are public. Not to everybody, obviously. But if the people are within your own church are looking at stuff and, and they think something's going on, the finances should be visible to them. Look, if there's a church out somewhere outside of these walls, I don't have the right to look at those church finances. Right? But anybody in here that has a question about church finances isn't going to just get a printout of we took in this much and we spent that much. Right? If there was a brand new truck out in the front with the with Law of Liberty Baptist Church on the side of it, We'd be like, who authorized that? <laughs> you know, where, when, why did we spend $20,000 on a truck? That's probably a cheap truck at this point. But, you know, anyway, belaboring that point. Extortioners get thrown out of the church. That's a legitimate issue. <clears throat> With such an one, no not to eat. Not even, shouldn't they not be in church? But don't even have a dinner date with them. <laughs> All right? They should be out. So those are the churchable offenses, okay? <clears throat> and we see in both spots, in Matthew 18 and in 1 Corinthians 5, that this is not a singular individual who churches an individual. The very definition of the word church is congregation. If you church somebody, it's because everybody is on board and everybody has passed judgment. Okay? In 2 Corinthians 4, I believe it is, 
we're talking about a uh, punishment that was, that was uh, given by many. I'm totally butchering that, but you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> right? <clears throat> that it's not just a single individual. It's not the pastor who judges everybody else in the church. It's actually the church that judges the church, okay? And that's what, even in this passage, 1 Corinthians 5, Paul is rebuking them for because they've got this bad glory that they're passing over all these faults, right? And he's saying, judge these people, cast them out. Verse uh, 4, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together, ye are gathered together, not when you are sitting in the office by yourself, right? When ye gather together, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. We're seeing that, hey, the congregation does it. When you get together, you judge these things. Okay? <clears throat> now, let's go ahead and look at a bad example of churching. Uh, go over to 3 John. Uh, while you're going to 3 John, another example of a churchable offense would be over in uh, 1 Timothy 1, verse 19, 20, uh, Hymenaeus and Alexander. It says they were overthrowing the faith of people, right? You wonder why Hymenaeus got called out twice? He got called out twice by Paul. Why? Because he was literally overthrowing people's faith. He was either one preaching such bad doctrine that people weren't getting saved or people that were saved are now falling out of church because of this guy. That's bad, right? He, that's the type of doctrine that he was preaching. He was preaching that the resurrection had already passed. That, oh, you missed the rapture. Like, this is like post, like they were living post Rapture? I don't know. Like, he had some really weird doctrine. Okay? And he was overthrowing the faith of some, and maybe even preventing people from getting saved in the first place. Right? He was preaching bad doctrine. He deserved to get called out. Twice. So, 3 John. Now, here we go. We're going to read this entire, entire book. Buckle up. All right. It's only 14 verses. So, the elder unto the well-beloved Gaius... Whom I love in the truth. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. For I rejoiced greatly. When the brethren came and testified of the truth that is in thee, he was saved, right? Even as thou walkest in the truth. Not only was he saved, but he was practicing what he preached. He lived out what he believed. Okay? And that is the goal of every Christian. Not just to get saved and believe. But you need to grow, okay? Any one of my plants in my house, my okra, right? I'm glad that they became okra plants, right? But now I want them to produce okra because that was the point in them becoming plants in the first place, right? All right. So, glad to hear that he's walking in truth, right? I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou doest faithfully whatsoever thou doest to the brethren and to strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity before the church, whom if thou bring forward on their journey after a goodly sort, thou shalt do well. Because that for his name's sake they went forth, taking nothing of the Gentiles. So this guy, Gaius, right, he's got a really good report. He's doing great works. And everyone around him is witnessing about how great this guy is. He's got a great name with those that are without, right? This guy would be a good bishop. We can see that there. Verse 8, we therefore ought to receive such. Somebody like that, we should let someone like that into the church. Someone who's going soul winning, who's taking care of people in the church, who's, uh, you know, not only people in the church, but strangers, Right? People he doesn't even know. He's taking care of people. <clears throat> that we might be fellow helpers to the truth. 
because that that is really a great thing, right? Well, you can do a lot by yourself, but you can do a lot more with more fellow helpers, right? We saw that in the Old Testament, God's telling them that one shall chase a hundred or and a hundred shall chase 10,000, I believe. Probably got the numbers wrong, but it was exponential, right? The more that they got done, the more people came together. We should be bringing fellow helpers together, people that have the same goals as we do. Okay, now here comes the bad churching. I wrote unto the church, so John wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth prating against us with malicious words and not content with it, therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren and forbiddeth them that would and causeth them, uh, casteth them out of the church. So we see Diotrephes doing a few things. Number one, he's not receiving John or those that are working with John. He's not receiving them, right? And probably John's doing a good work. He, he wrote a book in the Bible. He's probably doing a good job. Okay, <clears throat> And then we also see that, you know, he's, he's prating against John and those with malicious words, right? Malicious, hateful words. We got a railer here, okay? An actual railer. <laughs> Neither doth he himself receive the brethren. So he's not letting the brethren into the church and forbiddeth them that would and casteth them out. So people in the church that are like, we should receive them. They believe on Jesus Christ the same way we do. We should receive them. You're just, you're railing on me. You get out of here too. He's casting them out of the church too. Right? Anybody who would stick up for John or the other brethren are getting kicked out of the church. Yeah, it never happened. Absolutely, totally just in Bible times. <clears throat> so I can see Diotrephes here. He's looking at John and he's saying, Joe, don't come to the church on Sunday. He's saying, don't come, Joe. You will be. I'll kick you out. And the other men will kick you out. Right? Because nobody wants you here. Well, obviously, there were people in his church that wanted to receive people, yeah. right? So, we see that, what does John do? Does John make a declaration and say, Diotrephes, you're kicked out of the church? No, because, number one, he hasn't talked to Diotrephes face to face. Number two, he hasn't really gotten witnesses to establish what's going on. So he can't bring it before the church, although this is already a public matter. So, so Diotrephes skips some steps. And so John's having to address this at step three-ish, where it's like the church, hey, look, this is going on. When I get there, I'm going to remember his deeds. We're going to go back to step one. And we're going to figure this out, right? Right? Step two, it's going to be established, and maybe Diotrephes will be kicked out here. But guess what? John doesn't say. John doesn't say, I'm excommunicating you over a letter. He says, hey, look, I am going to come. We are going to talk. I'm going to remember your deeds, right? John is going to follow the biblical pattern that has happened, whereas Diotrephes is literally just kicking out anyone that disagrees with him. That's wicked. Okay, so let's just remember, regardless of where the process starts, if we're already at step three, hey, look, we need to go back and make sure we've talked, we've established, and then deal out punishment by the church. The church deals out the punishment. It is not one man who deals out the punishment. That is proper churching. And remember, don't just church people over eating your chicken soup. Okay? All right. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your word and, and just the clarity that is in your word, how we can look at it and see the truth.